Am I in the right position here? Is my shirt green? Is the green screen working all right? Hi, everyone. I'm in a slightly different position than normal. Hi, let's do some detectiving. This needs to be in a slightly different place, doesn't it? Move me there. There we go. I don't think that's too bad. That works out okay. And we've got a special guest today. You see him up there? I don't know when the last time he was in the Marty Cam position. Here he is, though. He's been inching his way back into the room. And, well, I've been in here filming most of the day. Nemo's War is coming up soon. That's going to be a fairly beefy playthrough. Hopefully it gets edited down okay. But yeah, Marty's been here the whole uh, the whole time. Usually with the promise of food, he's gone. But he's back. And he could be in the corner there, as long as it doesn't get in the way. I think you can pretty much see everything there. So is everything is everything coming through okay? Can you see me and hear me okay? Hi, Sila. Sila? I was looking at new things. How's it going? Here we go. We get Jewel Marty when I zoom in on him. And of course, he was just lying in the perfect position about 10 minutes ago as well. Of course, just as the just as the stream starts, he adjusts that. I'm just going to... I will be silent for a second. I'm just going to see if I can stop the top of my head being cut off. No, I cannot stop the top of my head being cut off. Okay, then that's a downside of putting the camera further down. We'll work it out. Just, yeah, I usually have to have the camera in the windowsill. I've got blinds. It was a mistake getting blinds. They get in the way of the blinds. Light gets through. It's a whole thing. Hi, James. How's it going? Glad you could join us. I'm going to need your help for some deduction. Although we are playing a kind of yeah, easier case. This is one I had wondered about for ages and ages. I bought it it's probably about six months now because the year has flown by uh but yeah it's it's one that since it came out a couple of years ago i want to say i'd been re I'm, I'm really keen on deduction games on detective -y kind of games played a lot of them and this kind of it does something different right that if, if you don't know about uh, detective this is a multiplayer game where you can play it completely competitively and uh, the the biggest thing is a person plays as the chisel. The chisel has their own special book that no one must look in. And it has kind of the responses to all of the people you question, the places you search. And the chisel, as well as giving life to all of these people, the chisel decides whether those people are telling the truth or not. And just says something to you and you can challenge them and if you're right to challenge them on a lie you get some leverage over them uh, so things like that carry over into the different modes so you can play it completely competitively you bribe other players for information and stuff and you're trying to be the first to figure it out we have played it twice three players cooperatively so the two detectives were cooperating and Rach played the chisel both times they did a really good job as uh, as the chisel because you're, like, you're not necessarily trying to win as the chisel. You're trying to, you know, give a, a good experience for, for the detectives. I think we managed to solve them, but we are on. So this this is case number three. I don't know that there's a particular storyline going through the cases. But uh, yeah, there, there are a load in the base box. It's an expensive game. It's an enormous box full of stuff. Uh, all of the cases have a load of cards for them. This is Heist to Nowhere. So this is still a gumshoe difficulty case, the easiest difficulty of the cases. So we are this fine detective here. We're going to start out some police station somewhere. See on the map here, a lovely Vincent Dutre art based on uh, some real LA map from the time, like a kind of uh, fanciful uh, LA map. So we're going to start in some police station somewhere. We have 12 days to solve the crime, although this is sleuth mode. So in sleuth mode, we have a paragraph book, a case book, instead of things that are in the normal case boxes. So we have these search cards. We have these response cards that the chisel decides, you know, what to show you and stuff like that. 
instead of all of that, we have uh, the sleuth case. But this can be played cooperatively as well. We haven't tried that. In fact, I have never tried uh, the sleuth mode because I don't want to practice it. Because if I practice it, that's another case gone. That uh, you know, I I don't know if I remember the other two cases though. To be honest, when I started playing them, I probably would. But what I could do is, after I've played this case now, I will know what happens. So. It's ruined for me until I forget it as a detective, but I could play the game multiplayer now and I would be the chisel because I know the answers to things. And it doesn't matter if the chisel knows the answers because, uh, yeah, you would know them anyway from reading the casebook. And you kind of need to know the, the outline of what the answer is to see how you can you know throw the detectives off and all of that stuff. Hi, Moran. How's it going in Serbia? Thank you for joining me. We're going to do some detecting. So the first thing that needs to happen is uh, we need to check all of the cameras and things are working. Uh, if you weren't here at the very, very start, by the way, you can you can see him in the corner, can't you? Uh, Marty is back in the Marty cam spot. It's it's a prestigious time. He hasn't been here for ages. And I haven't used this camera for ages. I haven't needed to. Uh, so we have a, a pad for our workings out. But we also have a, a detective casebook that gives you your player aid. A lot of this stuff you don't really need for the solo game, but it gives you, you know, a list of motives and stuff like that. And uh, some things you might need to remember. But the main thing we will need this book for is the intro to the case. So I won't. Hi, Chris. Marty says hi, I'm sure. I've just seen it. Can I get the screen bigger so I can see the writing from the screen rather than leaning over to try and see it in real life? Because I'm not sat over there. There we go. So this is this is something everyone's allowed to read. Everyone has one of these books when they're playing multiplayer or otherwise. And so this is what we start with. Hi, Michael. The case of the sleeping cat. See if you can solve it. See if you can get him to turn around with sheer willpower. Not even turning his ears. Absolutely not interested. Marty. No, she's fast asleep. Uh, so... This is the heist to nowhere case. And let's see if we can solve it. So last night, Mayor Boten got the newspapers together and dished on how we, the glorious Los Angeles Police Department, they sound like they're from England, uh, will be putting the tax to armed crime, which is up by 20%. If you dicks have been paying any attention, it means detectives, by the way, I hope, in this telling he does. Uh, have been paying any kind of attention to the weekly briefs. And this morning, the Farmers and Merchants Bank was knocked over to the tune of $349,522. Flip case card A. So, we've got all these case cards. You don't look at any of this. You just get them out of the box and uh, put them out and don't look at them until you're told to. So, A. Robbery at the Farmer and Merchants Bank. This is going to you'll see it as we play but this is going to play into you know what you can ask people about uh, and an important element of the case so robbery at the farmers and merchants bank uh there we go i forgot i had an even more zoomed in angle uh, you can see the problem we have boron oh boron wants results so i want results oh, I'm, I'm the chief now i'm a detective at 8.15 a.m., two men wearing rubber Halloween masks and wielding shotguns entered Farmers and Merchants Bank next door to the Bradbury building, placed the crime scene marker at uh, 48. So the crime scene was at the Bradbury building over here. Uh, oh, we can go to the Zoom demo. Francis Trask, one of West LA's finest, and by finest I mean bottom of the damn barrel, was on bank duty. Flip case card D. There he is, Francis Trask. Baby face with weepy doe eyes. Hard to imagine he's protecting anything other than a box of donuts. Why the hell they had a West LA beat cop guarding a downtown bank is curious, but I digress. Officer Trask wasted no time in wussing out. He was found cuffed with his own bracelets 
to the handles of a large potted plant. You can find him at his station, typing up his resignation if God is kind. Place Trask standing at four. So this is uh, an element of um, Detective. We have this, uh, well, elements of many games have punch boards, but you do not punch these out until you are told to. So we have found uh, Trask. So we've got no idea who uh, loads of these people are. But here is Trask, and he would go on his standee, but I'll lie him down so we can all see. Uh, where is he? He is at four. So he, yeah, he's at the West LAPD. That is going to go over a little bit, isn't it? We'll, we'll work it out. Uh, next, the few customers present were told to press flesh to floor. And with all resistance stamped out, two men approached one of the tellers, Julia Swanson. Case card C. Julia Swanson, her hair is done up in the latest fashion. Fidgety and nervous, clearly shaken by her ordeal. Is she really, though? We'll find out. They forced her to open the vault and quickly loaded up the canvas duffels they had brought with them. If you have any questions for her, Miss Swanson is recuperating from her ordeal at her mother's home on Whittier Boulevard. So we need Miss Swanson is at number 74. Oh, she's all the way across L.A. Oh, I'm trying to read that. It took the perps over 20 minutes to bag the money and load it into the getaway car, but here's the real kick in the ass. No alarm was triggered, no suspicions were raised, and no one noticed a damn thing. It was only by chance that a day watch officer, a day watch blue, Officer Mickelson, saw the perps loading the last bag and drew his piece, ordering them to cease and desist. The driver neither ceased nor desisted, and instead peeled rubber in a bright blue mercury coupe leaving behind his compatriot, one Al Pacific, to fend for himself. Let's look at Al Pacific. His eyes are like ice, emotionless. Ice is emotionless, isn't it? Prison tattoos cover his arms, not someone to screw around with. Um, Pacific exchanged fire with Officer Mickelson, winging him, but Mickelson was able to put two rounds in Pacific's leg. Pacific bled out over two blocks before officers apprehended him. He had a few grand stuffed in his pockets, but the rest of the take split with the driver. Pacific's wheelman is yet as yet unidentified, but I'm guessing Al will be bending over backwards to give him up, seeing as he took the money and ran. No thieves among honor, or whatever it is they say. Pacific is warming a cell at headquarters, so go brace him ASAP. Place Pacific standee at 51. Oh, so he's there. Find out where his buddy is and get that money back. It's my birthday and I expect this case to be tied up in a tight little bow and placed on my desk with a thoughtful greeting card about how I'm the best damn captain you've ever had the pleasure of working under. I'm just going to do um, John Fowler from Catterick and that. Uh, get to work. Okay, so that's the position we find ourselves in. Here are the people we can go and question. And I believe we start at a PD anywhere we can. It's raining. Oh, it's been raining all day. Well, I hope it's a highlight. I hope that uh, we can catch the perp. Uh, yes, punch your everything as you found. Follow any special rules. Uh, and place your mini at any police station location. So, so solving the case, I should probably do this bit as well, by the way. <laughs> solving the case, you must locate the stolen money. So here are the four people that we can look for. Oh, three people in the crime scene. Special rules. You cannot use your solve token for this case. I don't think that applies to sleuth mode. If... The money has not been located by the end of the final day. For your final guess, you may write down the location you believe the money is located at. If you're correct, you'll share victory with the chisel. I think, again, that works a little bit differently in chisel mode. There are kind of... You know, if, if you don't solve it in time, you get a few more days to do it. I think you get a, a couple more second chances like that. Your rank diminishing each time you have to have a second chance uh, before it gives you your final ranking. I quite like the rank. Although, yeah, it's it's really hot in this room. I'm really looking forward to uh, the weather cooling down and it getting a bit more grim. Quite like walking in the rain. Uh, Farmers and Merchants Bank is a play on Merchants and Farmers Bank. Thanks, Michael. I don't know any of this stuff. So. We can start out in a police department. It depends who we would like to question first. Really. 
So two people are in police departments. We wouldn't have to spend an action to get to them. So they're basically, th this is the special side of the board for the chisel, uh, for the sleuth mode. So we have four actions. We have four action cubes per day. Uh, we can move. Movement is anywhere within a district. See these colored lines uh, defining the districts? You can move any space within a district and certain locations uh, kind of bridge to districts. So if I was here and I wanted to get down here, it would cost me one move action to get to there, another move action to get anywhere in that district then. That's how you move between them, these bridges. Uh, so I can move, I can question if there's a suspect at that location. I can search a location and I can search a suspect for evidence. So I could question people. I wonder if it's worth going to Al Pacific first. Just because then it's just a little hop, skip and a jump over to the Bradbury building where the heist took place. Uh, first of all, though, I need to get my pad ready. So people uh, that we can question and we can write down you know, their responses and notes and everything. So we have uh, Al Pacific. And then Julia Swanson, Francis Trask, and then we can ask them about the cards themselves. So A is the robbery, B is Al, C is Julia, D is Francis. So we can ask them about these things. Is that all working okay? Yes, I think so. So yeah, I would like to ask the police officer, but I feel like maybe we can get evidence from being in this PD first. So I'm going to start out over here in 51, the LAPD headquarters. And I think a good first... There's no point searching a location, is there? And I wonder if there's any point searching a suspect. He's already in police custody. Surely we'd have any evidence that was on him. Uh, I think, but what are we going to question him about? Could question him about the robbery. Yeah, I'm going to question him. First action, question him about the robbery. So what we need now is the sleuth card for this case. So if you are questioning someone, you use this grid, use this grid to find out where to uh, look. So it is, I'm, I'm asking him about the robbery, aren't I? So that would take me to paragraph 652. Uh, and also, if you are searching a suspect or a location, these are the paragraphs that you go to there as well. Uh, so I am going to find paragraph 652. Uh, yes, you spend a cube to move. So it's an action to do any of these things. I've got four action cubes per day. So where is my sleuth book? Here it is. 652. Let the camera get used to it a second. So it focuses and then we can go in. So Pacific pretends to play dumb. It wasn't me, officer. I'm innocent. You got the wrong guy. Then he sneers at you. You think I'm going to talk to you? Think again. He adds his middle finger for emphasis. So, if we think he hasn't given us the best response there, we can challenge him. If we're right, we'll gain leverage over him. If we're wrong, we will incur stress. And stress kind of accelerates the game, gives us less time to find all of this stuff. I think challenging him... Well, I don't know. Sometimes you could challenge people in the mode with the chisel. You could challenge people and they were just never going to talk to you. So it was wasting your time. So I might be wasting my time with this stuff. You grab his middle finger and yank hard. Pacific screams. You broke my finger. Oh, that's supposed to be a family-friendly channel. There's crime in this game. <laughs> he nurses his hand. Uh, screw him. What am I protecting that backstabbing scab for? He ain't worth this. Hank Sloan, may he die screaming for his mother. He brought me in on the job. Look at E. Hank Sloan is suspect number four. Gain one leverage over Pacific. So... What did he say? Uh, Hank Sloan brought him in. So, f first of all, uncover E. 
Hank Sloan, wanted in connection to the recent robbery at Farmers and Merchants Bank, whereabouts currently unknown. Uh, so I asked him about the robbery, and he said uh, Sloan brought him in. Him in. to deal with my slow handwriting. And I did... Ch I'll, I'll put CH for I have challenged. So there is no point asking him that again and challenging him. That's all you're getting out of him. So on that particular topic. So I've gained a leverage over Al Pacific... If I ask him about something else in the future, I can choose to spend that leverage to automatically challenge him. And if I'm wrong about the challenge, I won't incur stress. So if you're a bit unsure, but you have to, you have to spend that leverage though before you ask him. So you might be wasting it. So do I want to ask him about anything else while we're here? I can ask him. Oh, I can actually ask him about Sloan now. So maybe that would be worth doing. I could ask him about Sloan. Let's spend a cube. To ask him about Sloan, which would be asking Al Pacific about Sloan, who is E515. Here we go. I would love, by the way, I can understand why they might not necessarily want to do this, but I would love it if this uh, sleuth book could be a PDF as well. <laughs> if times like this. Uh, so, 5.15. Hank left me bleeding out on the street, so why should I give a flying damn about him? He's hiding out at the Stag and Bull. Go bust his ass. I, I didn't spend the leverage anyway, but I don't think it's worth challenging him on that. I think that would just incur stress. So he's at the Stag and Bull on number 22, which is... There. Stag and Bull 22. So uh, yeah, I could, I could show you. I think that it would be a complete waste of time to do it. What do you think? Oh, you saying challenge? Do you think I should challenge him on this? I should maybe have used my leverage. I suppose he could be covering for him. What do you reckon? I'm going to write in. Do we trust him? says he's at 22. So we can always move on. So I'm not entirely sure if he is there. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if he said challenge to the previous question or this one. We would only gain a stress, wouldn't we? We can gain up to three stress. Yeah, because I'm not sure which question we're challenging. And trust him, he's rolled over. Okay. We'll trust him for now. If we have reason to doubt him, we'll go back. Do I want to ask him about anything else? I could ask him about Trask. But you know what? I, I think I want to go to the crime scene. I'm going to move, so move anywhere in central LA. I could go to the Stag and Bull. But I think what I would like to do is go to the crime scene, and I want to search the location. Hey, Rohit. I'm glad you can catch it as well. We've only had... Uh, well, this is this is turn one. This is my fourth action. You've missed a couple of questions, but don't worry. This this is There's been a heist. Al Pacific was involved in court. Hank Sloan, we know now. Is the other guy involved? He hasn't been caught yet, but he might be there. That's the police officer that just basically rolled over and let them do it. And we've got a frightened witness. I am heading to the crime scene right now. to, And I'm searching it. So I am searching location 48, which takes us to paragraph 657. Here we go. Let the camera focus a sec. Go to it. You go over the crime scene again and again and again. The result is the same. Nothing here you haven't already found. Okay. That was a waste of time. Still, <laughs> we know for sure now. Uh, so, I've had all of my actions for the day. I now move them all back up to available. 
and progress the day along. So we've got 11 more days to catch whoever it is. So there is no point being here at all. I think then since, since it's still in central LA, we can go to the Stag and Bull. And this would be a good bridge to go to West LA, actually. Let's go to the Stag and Bull. Is he there? Do I need to search the location first? I'm going to search the location because I'm not sure if I should place him there. Because I don't know if he is there, do I? He's just told me he's there. I'm going to search the place. So 22 takes me to paragraph 94. The bartender recognizes Sloane, but doesn't know where to find him. Last time I saw him here, he was talking to this mousy little dame. Mousy little dame, you say? What if it's Julia Swanson? Not to jump to conclusions here. And also, we've been led up the garden path here. There's no Sloan here. So I, I moved and I searched, didn't I? So that's two actions down. What do you reckon? Head on out to West LA. Go back to him and question him again. Or we've been told now that Sloan was with a mousy dame. Julia Swanson, her card says fidgety and nervous. Maybe I should spend the next two actions just heading over there. What do you reckon? Re-question him? Go to the policeman? Or head to the suspect? Hi, Rach. Hi. Do you want to do some detecting, Rach? We're early on. Marty comes on. We're having a Marty break. He hasn't looked at the camera yet. Is the multi camera not working? Oh, Rich, can you put that in for me? Is he gone? Is he? In there, that one. That's been a freeze frame of the multi cam, everyone. Hang on. Is it in, Rich? There he is. That's why he was so suspiciously still. Slide him over a touch rate, draw the camera. Or can I slide? That's as far as he goes. We could just about make him out. I imagine he's going to go with Rach. So this is our last... Our last little glimpse of live Marty. That's why he wasn't responding at all when I was calling him. Should just leave it as a freeze frame though. Who'd know? Marty! Yeah, I, I think he's gone. There he is. So I think, unless he comes back, I'm just going to turn that off in the corner. Have you got a drink? You've got a drink. Uh, I'll have another one, please. Here come Marty. So Rach has taken Marty from us. He would have left anyway. He's going to hope for some food. Uh, so what what have we got votes for? Swanson, Swanson. Talk to the mousy dame. So that is going to be my actions. So one action to move to 57. One action to move to 74. So if, you, if you joined us uh, a bit later on, a move action in this game, it's one action to move anywhere in the region you're in. See the coloured uh, borders. So move to the bridging areas. That's how you get to the next one. So that is another day.
And all we've really found out is that that guy isn't at the stag and bull. But maybe he's here. So I think... Are we going to search the location? Are we going to search her? Or are we going to question her? I think I'll quest I'm going to question her first about Sloan, and I think she'll lie. So, Julia Swanson about E is 366. Hank's been staying at the Frost Annoyer for the past few weeks, but that's all I'm going to say, Detective. So you want me to believe he's at 32 now? Well, I'm not going to just keep running around here. Should we challenge? I'm going to challenge. I think she's lying. 939. I'm just aware that there's a delay in me asking question, but I do want your input. Here we go. Swanson. I need to get my uh, my screen back. That's why I can't see anything. Here we go. Swanson caves when you press her. Damn it, enough already. He lives off of Vermont and Carson. 83. Oh, she didn't say 83. <laughs> Just leave me the hell alone now. She refuses to say anything else. Uh, so apparently 83. Pop him on there. Gain a leverage over Swanson. So I think I'm going to use that. So we have asked Julia about Sloan. Says at 83. And that's challenged. So no point asking about that again. Sloan, um, Al Pacific probably was lying about him then. So should we ask Julia about the robbery search yeah we, we can search her uh search julia swanson is three five one so what's going on here three five one take your hands off me detective you frisk her anyways her right pocket reveals a scrap piece of notebook paper neatly folded. Look at J. J is up here. What's that? Scrap of notebook paper. There are some notes and indecipherable scribblings on it found on Julia Swanson. So there's that rendezvous. Let's put this into the zoomed in area. I need to see it as well. Uh, so we've got rendezvous. Lighthouse or Stag and Bull. Clean Beach House. Don't trust Hank. Okay. The plot thickens. Lighthouse. There isn't a lighthouse. Boom. I'm going to put a little token by Lighthouse. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll go over and um, look at that. So... We've got now notebook paper, which is J. I think Miss Swanson needs to be asked about that. So asking Julia about J is 666. And I think leverage. I'm doing leverage. I'm going to spend my leverage over her. The leverage, by the way, is little um, hats. I don't know how clearly you can see those. Probably not as clearly from above. So, 666. Six, six. Swanson looks tired when she sees the paper. I give up. I don't want to lie anymore. That shows where the money's buried. It's in one of the cages at Gay's Lion Farm. 69. So, money is at 69. And because I used my leverage, I can look at the challenge. And if it's an incorrect challenge, I don't incur stress. I also don't gain leverage. 165. 
Oh, she was lying. Gay's lying form. Yeah, right. Julia can see you don't believe her, but she glares at you and refuses to tell you what the scrap of paper really means. We, yeah, we maybe should have looked at that. Uh, if she had a gun right now, you're certain she'd put a slug between your eyes without a second thought. Gain a leverage. Over so I don't gain the leverage because I used my leverage. I used my leverage to get that answer. So I've challenged is lying. So maybe you need the four dots and use those to find where the plus is. That is a very good idea. Yeah, don't you can have a look at the map. So if we're thinking kind of lighthouse area, what if it's like lighthouse and then point firming and then that's one and that's one. That kind of fits into that shape to me. And so the X would be there. Does that work? Or 81? Something like that. Have we solved it? What have I done here, though? I have questioned her. I've searched her. I've questioned her again. 86. Yeah, it is kind of halfway, isn't it? But it's kind of on the level. It could be anywhere, couldn't it? But I'm thinking because that mentions the lighthouse, clean the beach house. We could at least head over to the lighthouse and search it since it's one of the rendezvous points. Do we want to ask her about anything else? Or are we happy to move on? We could ask her about the robbery, about Al, about herself, and about Francis Trask. Francis Trask could be a complete red herring, though. He might just be, you know, a scaredy cop. What's that from? A monk that's from. Highly uh, recommend Monk if you haven't seen it. Even if you have seen it, I've seen it, and it's great watching it again. Uh, it says Lighthouse. Rendezvous, Lighthouse, or Stag and Bull. Clean Beach House, Don't Trust Hank. So, is this like another Mastermind thing, though, where Trask's involved? Where it's Trask and Swanson scamming these crooks? Could be a lot of things. So sh shall we ask... I'm inclined to go and look at that lighthouse tomorrow. Should we ask her about anything else while we're here? Oh, I haven't got my tea, have I? This would usually be where I have a, a tea break. 86. Yeah, that kind of area, isn't it? If we're kind of thinking this, are those uh, dots. Hank as in Hank Sloan, yeah. We've asked her about him. Yeah, she said he was at 83. Is that after we challenged him? Yeah, she said she didn't she said she hadn't seen him for ages and said he was in one place and then we challenged her and she said he was there. Francis said he was there, but he was lying. We can still go back and press him on that, but I don't know if we'll find anything. We can we haven't searched the location. We searched Julia, but we haven't searched the location. Maybe that'll be something to do. I'm going to search the location, and I'm going to wait for what you think uh, about questioning her. Have I searched? I've searched her. I'm going to search the house. 1023. So this is... Um... So this is action four. Yeah, searched her. Now I'm searching the location. 1023. You go through drawers and cabinets, finding nothing. Swanson glares at you, but her mother is surprisingly helpful. Perhaps you'd have better look at Julia's house, Detective. 68. You think Swanson would murder her mother right then and there if you weren't present? 
Okay. So that's another possibility. Either way, though, that's my four dots. So we move on to the next day. Hi, Rach. Thank you. Tea time. Right. Yeah, you could have been telling the truth, yeah. Uh, so you want you want to ask about Al? Okay, I get my four actions back. Let's question her about Al. So that's going to be... Oh, other side. So ask Julia about Al, who is B906. Okay. Al is a maniac. He'd beat his own mother if he thought it would get him something. He said he'd kill me if I didn't help them, and I believed him. Oh, I remembered something, Detective. Al loved the casino. 34. He wouldn't stop talking about it. Do we want to challenge her on that? I'm going to make my notes. Do we want to challenge her? So what did she say? Al is a maniac. said he'd kill her loved casino the place 34 gonna have no room now if she's lying do you believe her should we challenge that we haven't gained any stress yet it's tempting what if she's in deep with all of these guys I might try it just in, just in case it's wrong. You'll see what happens then. Oh. Okay, it's it's another way that we can find out about um, Hank. You know she's lying about the casino and you call her on it. That was a lie, but Al really is a maniac. I was telling the truth about that. He was never supposed to be part of the plan, but Hank screwed up. Julia realises she said too much and zips it. Look at E. We've already found Hank Sloan, but we've got a leverage over Swanson if we want to ask her about anything else. So. Maniac. Is what I'll uh, write in there. We've challenged that correctly. The casino was a red herring. We would have been wasting our time. So do we want to ask her about anything else? We can ask her about herself. We can ask her about um, the policeman. And we can ask her about the robbery. I might I'm might. i going to ask her about the robbery using my leverage. So let's do Julia A799. I haven't done that already, have I? Can't remember what I've asked her about. I would hope that I've uh, made notes if I have already asked her about it. So, 799. They were wearing masks and I tried to trigger the alarm, but they caught me before I could do it. And it all happened so fast. I'm going to lose my job, aren't I? She begins to sob. So we automatically get the challenge paragraph, but we don't get any rewards or penalties. 600. You tell Swanson to save the waterworks for a flake that'll believe her. Can't see that's too small. And she glares at you. I can see Chivalry truly is dead, Detective. All right, the man you're looking for is Hank Slow. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should speak with the lawyer before we go any further. So I don't get that leverage, but it was a bit of a wasted action because we already know all about Hank. Hank. Okay, I think we should move on. I've got two actions left, and they are going to be. 98. It would be nice, wouldn't it, to just go out on the hunch and just search there. There's the money. Boom. It's over. So which number do you think it is? If you think... If you think we should go and try and solve this puzzle of where the money is, there's the shape... Where do you think that is? 
if you can uh, if anyone suggests a number i'll go there but i would like as my first port of call i'm going to go to the lighthouse next turn so i move twice that's the day we move on we have four actions again and i am going to search the lighthouse it was going to be one of their things so let's see if we can if anything's hanging out at the lighthouse so i am going to search location 89 680 do you think do you think the stash is any of these numbers julia's house well yeah or maybe i should have gone to julia's house actually before i moved it's only two actions to get back there but uh yeah that's something to think about as well so um And we need to find Hank as well if we think he's the suspect. So we do need to find him. Uh, what am I doing? I'm searching location 89, which is 680. At the base of the lighthouse, you find a dead body slumped in the corner. Next to the body is an empty duffel bag. Look at G and L. Detecting. G. The body of Hank Sloan. There is a bullet in the back of his head. He was executed. The driver's license in his pocket indicates he lived off of Vermont and Carson. That is where he lives. Uh, found at the LA Harbor Lighthouse 89. L. Duffel bag. Empty, except for a few crumpled bills at the bottom. One corner of the bag has a dirty red stain. Found at the lighthouse. Okay. Taking another twist, hasn't it? So I search the location. You could even trace lines from here. You know, if you trace these lines, then Hank's house fits in very nicely with those lines, doesn't it? So I'm going to move that. Let's investigate then. Let's move over. There's nothing else to be done at the lighthouse, so I'll take that away. Let's move over to his house and let's search the location. So this is 83, which is paragraph... 795. 795. The house is empty and there's no sign of Sloan. The garage, however, is a different story. Reveal F. F is the, Mer the Mercury Coupe. Oh, this is way too small. <laughs> I need it bigger to read. I need it closer to me. My eyes are bad. Uh, the car is registered to Julia Swanson. Address 68. The rear window is shattered and there are bullet holes in the trunk. There's a postcard on the front seat for the LA Harbour Lighthouse found at Hank Sloan's residence. The plot thickens even thicker. So, yeah, it's looking doubtful, isn't it, that we're talking to Hank? So, I think then, shall we, shall we take a trip to Julia's house? It's going to be two actions to anywhere anyway. He's not on the board, he's not there. So I can do an action. Should have done it while we were up there. But hey, it wasn't all clear just yet. I'm going to move there. New day. Four actions back. Julia's house. I agree. Move again to take us to Julia's house, number 68. And I will search it. Number 68 is 851.
You ransack the house looking for clues. The only thing that appears promising is a postcard laying on Swanson's dining room table. Look at H. Which is a postcard for the LA Library. 41. Okay. So I've moved. I've searched a location. I guess. We, we've still got him to question as well. But he was he was caught at the scene, wasn't he? I think this officer's got to be involved in some way, hasn't he? So I'm going to... Move. And move again. And another day has flown by. And I'm going to search the LA library. 41 is 322. Yeah, the, the note mentioned rendezvous at the Stag and Bull, but we searched that when we were looking for Hank, and he told us that Hank used to come in with a nervous... I can't remember how he put it. He might have said broad. Uh, 41 is 322. We have already searched that, though. So, three, two, two. A quick check with the librarian, and she hands you the log for the map and atlas section. There's only one entry. Someone recently looked at a topographical survey of the Palos Verdes Hills. Look at mystery card one and place it on the board in the correct location. You move to the new locations as normal. Write down the following paragraph numbers. Hang on. So, A943, B1087, C581, D796, E187. Look at mystery card one. Mystery card one. 78. <gasps> oh, wow. They weren't there before. They're there now. So does this change? What if they are the bottom two dots? There's the one diagonal a bit. There's the other one diagonal a bit. And it would make B the correct one, right? I think there are missing pieces to all of this, though. We're going to need a motive. And who's done it? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, the diagram's upside down. And then it's these things, isn't it? So C would be the correct one. Good eye. So I think that's where we should look. And then if we found the money, it's easy to question people, isn't it? So, move, move to C. That's what we're saying, isn't it? One action, search location. So C is going to take us to 581. Oh, did we, did we not need to find out? Spoilers for what I've just seen. Uh, 581, you quickly spot a patch of red dirt that was recently disturbed. A few shovelfuls and you hit something. Congratulations. Look at mystery card two. Garbage bag full of money. The stolen money from the farmers and merchants bank heist. The glory is yours. Feel free to skim a few grand off the top as a finder's fee. I feel like I should have gone somewhere else now. Beforehand and asked, I thought we were going to find the money and it was going to be like one of these cards and then we could question the policeman about it because I think he's involved in some way but I've ended it so there's plenty to find then uh, if I do play this again uh, as I said I'll have to be the chisel so we, we get now 
something that I am very scared about. Uh, I've never looked in here because of the, all of the warnings. But I need to look at page 13. Where are the page numbers? Oh, they're right in the middle. That's not going to help me not look at things. So there's actually, this is a bit of a... I didn't realise because I haven't done these things before. Uh, but there is a cool way. So normally, you need to find the suspect, the weapon they use, the motive. But this is a bit different because it's a heist rather than a murder. And there is a cool way that this works. Uh, you get the suspect that you think it is. So yeah, there's no heist to nowhere here, is there? Yeah, you would you would find your suspect. You would look at which weapon card you think it is, and then the motive you think it is. Add all the numbers together, and that takes you to a paragraph. And if the paragraph says "good boy" or "girl" or otherwise, then uh, you've won, and then can turn to this paragraph. But uh, evidently. <laughs> I didn't realize at the time. Maybe we'll do another case at some point. Uh, this is a bit of a different case, but it's epilogue time. So, where is it? Here it is. So we're going to find out the details of the case now. So for... Yeah, all of it's spoilers, isn't it? But this is uh, extra spoilery spoilers. But we've got to know what happened, right? Here it comes. Julia Swanson hated working at the Farmers and Merchants Bank. The hours were poor, the pay was terrible, and her boss treated her like the dirt on the bottom of a sh hooker's shoe. It's set a long time ago, we'll say. Uh, the river of money she saw flow through the bank on a daily basis made her angry. Didn't she deserve a slice of the pie? Hadn't she paid her dues? Didn't this city owe her? She hatched a plan to rob the bank. It's her plan. First, she... everyone's involved. First, she seduced Francis Trask, a beat cop she'd had a brief fling with. The pathetic mope was lonely and desperate for affection, and it was laughable how little effort it took to wrap him around her finger. Next, she found Hank Sloan at a local bar frequented by ex-cons. She told him about the bank and how easy it would be to knock over. He'd find a crew and do the legwork, while she'd manipulate the guard logs and make sure that her pet pig, Francis was on duty that day. The three of them met as a secluded beach house belonging to Francis's parents to plan the heist. Julia didn't anticipate Hank hiring Al Pacific though, a psychopath with a history of violence. She also didn't anticipate Hank being smart enough to steal her car to use in the getaway. Her saving grace was that Hank didn't mention her name to Al, only telling him that there was a dame on the inside. Al didn't really care, he just wanted an excuse to terrorise people. The money was the icing on the cake. On the day of the heist, everything was going according to plan. Francis laid down like a lamb. Julia made sure the alarm wasn't triggered, giving Al and Hank a plenty of time to empty the vault. Officer Mickelson, however, threw a wrench in those plans. At the sight of the cop pointing a gun at him, Hank panicked and took off in the car, leaving Al alone on the street. Adding insult to injury, Julia was furious when she discovered Hank had used her car in the heist. Later that evening, Julia met Hank at the lighthouse according to the original plan. She'd already told Francis that Hank had split with the money, so he'd stayed at home. Francis was so infatuated with her that he would have believed Julia if she'd told him he was from, she was from Mars. Hank, underestimating the petite bank teller, decided to give Julia less than the agreed-upon percentage. When his back was turned, Julia calmly shot him in the head and took the money. She buried it in the Paulos Verdes Hills, deciding to wait until the furor over, furor over the robbery died down to dig it up and start her new life. This was her moment, and no man was going to take it from her. And this is uh, you know, instructions for the chisel. The first detective to search that location and get the card wins the game. So this, as I said, this is a bit of a different case. It's it's an easy case. I'll say that at the beginning. If you weren't here right at the beginning, there are a load of cases included in the game. How many are there? Three, six. There are nine cases included in the base game. It's a massive box and you know, fairly pricey, but you do get a lot of uh, stuff with it. Uh, and this is gumshoe difficulty. So this is case number three, although, yeah, this, it, so far anyway, I don't think there's been anything linking these cases. Uh, so yeah, this is number three, and it's gumshoe difficulty, the easiest difficulty. The next ones, in various size boxes, uh, you go to veteran difficulty, and then hard-boiled difficulty. There are also... There's an, expa there's an expansion we've got, and a new expansion, Smoke and Mirrors... Is the, the first expansion to Hollywood Crimes, something like that. And then there's a new one coming out that's just kind of a blister pack with, with just a box in it, which uh, sounds cool. 
I think that's meant to be very difficult as well. So, I really enjoyed that. I know that, like, it's it's not that great to stream because if you watch the stream, that case is kind of spoiled for you. But if you do, as I said, if you do want to get the game and it looks like your kind of thing, solo, you wouldn't be able to play that. You could go and question and find out more things than I did, although the epilogue did kind of tell you. Uh, but if you, if you play it multiplayer, you can be the chisel. Like, I would be now if we played this multiplayer. Uh, because you need to know the answer anyway, if you're the chisel, to you know best know how to kind of trick the detectives and selectively give them information. Uh, but yeah, you, you can still play the game again in that form. And leaving it long enough, you might forget. As I said, I'm not sure I remember those first two cases now. It's been about six months or something. But yeah, uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was fun. Yeah, we worked out the thing, didn't we? I, I won't reveal these things, just in case, yeah. Uh, in case you play it again, in case you get a copy and play it, uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be some avenues that you haven't seen, plenty of conversations uh, that you haven't seen. But yeah, it's a smaller one in terms of the number of people involved. You see on the on the notepad, there can be a couple more uh, people. Although actually, number four I was supposed to write in was uh, Hank Sloan, but obviously there was no asking him anything, was there? Um, but yeah, a, a bit of a different one because there isn't that the murder element and finding out the suspect weapon and motive uh, to try and get into it. But I would like... We'll see how this goes afterwards. Thank you for joining me for it. I would like to come back and do another case. It does mean that's another case that uh, I'm not discovering for the first time with uh, with Rach and that. But yeah, I've got, I got special permission uh, to, to stream one. Maybe we'll try uh, more of a difficult one next time. Uh, if she, I, th I think the car was that Officer Mickelson, was it? I keep thinking Mickle White, but isn't that Michael Caine's name? Um, yeah, the officer was shooting around, wasn't he? He had a gun, maybe firing at the car as uh, Hank got away in it, I would imagine, is what happened there. Uh, but yeah, so a, a bit of a different case, but I imagine that as the game goes on, it's got a few twists and turns like that. So this one is a bit of, yeah, a bit of a curveball in that rather than being the first person to sort out all of the crime and stuff, uh, to know all of the ins and outs, the, it did tell us in the introduction as well, find the money. Uh, so not uh, investigate any other stuff. And there's there's elements in the... I said right at the beginning. So this is the special sleuth mode for playing it completely cooperatively or solo. Uh, the paragraphs and stuff. If you want to play it multiplayer, you, you can play this version multiplayer, but the main version of the game is competitive. The detectives are working against each other. And you've got... Um, actions that cost money there is scratch in the competitive game cash that you can use to bribe people and uh, the the I, I love detective stories anyway and the um being in the detective game uh, but the thing that is completely unique about uh, this is that chisel book you know what what we got the the answer from so this, I won't show you inside the chisel book. Maybe like flick through one that's, you see that kind of thing there? That kind of table. So the chisel has got all of the suspects and what all of these are. And so when someone questions about something, if you search a location or search a suspect, that's always gonna be what it is. But yeah, the, the people you question, the chisel can decide if they want to be telling you the truth or not if that because they know the answer the chisel know knows what the final uh, result is going to be so if they see you out there really close to the thing they might want to throw you off the scent a little bit to give everyone else a, a bit of a chance they're kind of the the dungeon mastery uh role uh, we kind of thought of it as when Rach was the chisel. So it's, it's a really, really fun element of the game. As long as you've got someone that wants to be the chisel, of course. Uh, but if nobody wants to be the chisel, you've got this sleuth mode. I think it still works very well. But uh, yeah, that, there's that chisel mode. You can also, so you're competitive, you can take um, 
you, you can take evidence away uh, and people pay to see your evidence or you can um the the chisel as well uh, can get leverage over you so you know how i challenge people in this if you challenge so if i challenged and i was wrong i would start to gain stress and if i gained three stress i would advance the f the final guess marker have one fewer day to solve this out um but in the main mode if you question if you challenge the chisel on something the suspects just said to you and you're wrong to challenge them then they get leverage and they can use that leverage on you to block a question when you ask one uh, so that's the main way the competitive way there's money involved all of that stuff you can play though cooperatively with a chisel which is the only other way we've played it three players me and a friend uh, as the detectives working together and Rach as the chisel work very very well uh and so there's none of this uh, kind of bribery and stuff going on in there. But yeah, you're still working together to solve a mystery and the chisel is uh, working against you. Uh, how does it compare to Detective, the modern crime board game? Uh, the I'd say I've only played the easiest cases in this so far. I've played the three easy difficulty ones. So much easier and shorter. But that chisel element of it it's it's also more kind of it's not light-hearted it's still about crime and stuff but it is that kind of noir detective fanciful you know imaginary version of uh, la that i don't know uh, if it ever quite existed uh, as it's portrayed in these things but yeah it's, it's a much more easygoing kind of uh, deduction say compared to like detective season one the box they did was it last year where it was all standalone cases and some of those were uh, shorter and more easygoing it's probably more comparable to that although the chisel obviously is completely unique to this and is a fantastic um a fantastic element of it so detectives got it, you know, real world searching and using the Antares database uh, on the internet to eventually put your answers in, but to give you files on all of the suspects. The actual first game of Detective Modern Crime Board Game was really involved. Absolutely loved it, but it was one kind of overarching story in five cases where it would refer back to, you know, case one for some facts in it. You needed to take good notes. You needed to play it kind of regularly and in a short ish time frame but it's absolutely fantastic as well and um yeah and then um chronicles of crime is another very different one there's probably more on the kind of chronicles of crime for its look deals with quite grim things uh surprisingly grim storylines uh, and that's another different where that unique thing is the app that it uses and QR codes on the cards and stuff to get the results from the app. Search in a location in uh, AR mode on the app, all that stuff, 3D glasses. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed the, the chisel mode in this, especially it was just the right vibe as well. It's a game night. There was some alcohol involved uh, and uh, yeah, just laughing and uh, trying to figure out what Rach was telling the truth on. Rach, yeah, she 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 was she was game mastering it as well, uh, which I think is the best way to do anything like this. You're not tr the chisel isn't. I'm, I don't think it would be very fun if the chisel was playing to win. If the if the chisel was playing to absolutely just stonewall the detectives, I think that it would just be frustrating. There, I think you you. I feel like you go into the chisel just you're, you're trying to make it a good story and a good experience for everyone and that's why you're trying to you know if you can see that some some person is just getting nowhere and it's just going on all the red herrings maybe you want the suspects to tell them the truth and if someone's a hot shot you want to try and block them and deny them getting all of the stuff but hey yeah it's uh it's the other thing is that this is by far the most expensive game this is probably more than double the price of either of the others that I mentioned. And there's, you know, plenty of different things. You know, there's um, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. There's the little Detective um, series. And, you know, escape room games get into a bit of a different area. But yeah, there's plenty of uh, deduction and stuff. I do like the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective uh, scheme. We only played, though, that very first box. 
the kind of brownie one and we played it before they did these fancy new versions we played the istari version which we didn't know at the time i think we were fairly new into the gaming and we didn't know that it had a load of typos in it and one of the cases that we got completely stuck on i remember it was something to do with like someone's name changed halfway through the case uh, their surname changed i think and so we were thinking it was a different person and got completely sidetracked and thrown off and yeah found out at the end it was just a typo uh but yeah since it's been reprinted by is it space cowboys that do it and i don't think all of them but a lot of them have had paul grogan of gaming rules um check in triple check in everything uh, and getting uh, everything right that time so uh, yeah, I would, I would like at some point to go back to Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective with um, Paul's fancy correct versions at some point. I don't know how... Would that be a good stream? They're, they're pretty involved long things. A couple of hours at least, I think. And I'm always... When there's a detective or a story thing involved, I'm always anxious that, like... Rach hasn't really got time to be in streams when uh, it's work time. But, yeah, it's, it's nice for Rach to be involved in all of the story stuff. I have got... On this kind of noir uh, theme, I have got a game called Gumshoe that I would get, but it's not in this room, which is the same designer and the same kind of system as Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. It came out in the 80s, and as far as I know, has never been reprinted since then. I had to get a, a copy uh, secondhand. And so, yeah, I, I don't know what the kind of vibe of that is, how dark that is, how uh, I would imagine that would be a bit of a beefy one. Uh, and I'm not sure how popular it would be stream wise. But I think maybe, you know, I can see people not wanting to watch a playthrough of this because it's potentially spoiling a part of the game. Although you can play as the chisel and all that. But say Gumshoe, it's probably never going to get pro it's probably never going to get reprinted at this point, I would imagine. So I feel like I would watch a playthrough of it if I hadn't got it uh, to see, you know, what is this game like? Uh, what what would the story be like in there? Hi, Monica. Yes, you are very late to the party. I've been on a massive ramble there, haven't I? Yeah, uh, you can do the role playing as well. Rach really doesn't like doing accents in things. But yeah, I, th I think she did a couple in Chisel. I, th I think that's that's what... Um, it's part of what's happening in our Descent game now. Of uh, We're narrating the mainly one of us but uh yeah we're narrating the various characters and stuff and doing silly voices i think that's a good part of it um yeah 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 we've talked about yeah it's been a surprisingly quick win but i did think yeah the, the easy ones tend to be about an hour or so i think so if we do another detective stream at some point in the near future uh maybe we'll go on to a harder one because this this is one that i do a playthrough about every uh month oh i should say um Patreon.com forward slash Slicker Drips. If you'd like a vote and uh, you get extra entries into competitions, uh, you get to see videos early, vote on what happens. And mainly, help me be here to make these videos. And if you're watching back later, like the video and comment and subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's... It's... Um, it did decent... I think it's been in the playthrough before. It always does fairly well but like a lot of games is overshadowed by newer more exciting things uh because it's it's a couple of years old now i think detective city of angels but yeah i'm, I'm glad we got to it and i'd like to do it again as well with maybe a more involved trickier case yeah chronicles of crime got surprisingly dark i mean it's not supposed there is actually have you seen I think it's been announced. Yeah, I won't say anything else about that in case it hasn't been. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, oh, Chronicles of Crime never made any allusion to be being a family game, but oh, stuff got real. The Red Herring in Harsh Shadows. I think Gumshoe is an RPG system, but it is also the name of it. You can see it on Board Game Geek. It's also the name of uh, 80s uh, detective -y kind of game which is the same the similar setting the noir detective uh, setting which what really like i like sherlock holmes as much as the next guy but uh yeah i, I really like the la noir kind of theme including the game la noir which had its faults but hey you got to be a noir detective uh the original sherlock holmes and his baker street rascals 
I haven't seen that one. Uh, but I think that is gonna. Oh, it means it means the stream's ended in enough time for me to make tea now. Uh, but yeah, that that is it for uh, Detective City of Angels in a slightly shorter stream tonight. But I would like to come back with it. Thank you very much for being here with me. I will be back on Friday with Rach for a Q&A at five o'clock. So same time on Friday, 5 p.m. BST. And uh, there will be a playthrough of Nemo's War going up on Patreon very soon. A playthrough of Glenmore 2 uh, will be going up on the public channel. And there's all sorts of stuff all about where I am. On that live stream as well, if you entered the Cascadia competition, which the entries have closed, but if you entered that Cascadia competition, we're going to be drawing the winner on Friday, just so, you know, live and you can see that it wasn't fixed. It isn't just a spreadsheet with my name in it a million times. Honestly, I've got one. Why do I need to? Uh, but yes, thank you everyone for watching. Subscribe, like, Patreon, all of those things. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on Friday or in pre-recorded form on any day. Bye everyone. <laughs> <laughs>